Well guys, the next best thing to actually go fishing is, yes right, reading about it. Because, wow, has it been tough on the beaches this winter. We've had flood water coming in, we've had fresh water coming down the rivers. That seems to have messed out quite a bit. Wind after wind, low pressure after low pressure, pounding the beaches. It's been tough out there. And yes, you're right, here's Graham on yet another tough beach fishing session. Oh, I can't even bear to watch it. Back to me book, I think. Well, it's welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Sort of welcome. I mean, if you have those days where, oh my God, another big wave coming. <laughs> <laughs> Road wave! Oh Christ! Please no! That was close. I'll move the cameras. That's all I need, a road wave. And I always say it's three. I'm looking for the second and third one. I wanted to fish way down there. A place called Barton, which I drove past with the wife and actually but well, it's really good, some big cliffs at the back, nice sort of beach area. And I had to put it off by two days, I'm shouting because it was roaring here. I'll turn that way a bit. I had to put it off by a couple of days because, you know, for whatever reason, too much wind. Of course, those two days make the tide two hours later, you know, for that period. So it's now not high at seven or eight, it's like towards 10 o'clock at night, which means for me fishing during the day is low but it's worse. I thought, there's been plenty of worm around. I've found three different people worm. There's no ragworm at all, they said. Oh, great. I bought a little tub of fresh water lobworms, which I have caught blackfish and stuff on before. And something's happening with the tide at the moment. Anyway, I digress in the rage. Down there, there's a monster surf and I don't see any way I can fish it, to be honest. I don't know why the swell is big down there. Maybe it's very, very shallow. I thought, where can I go? I've come up to what they call her shink or big bank. It's deeper water, there'd be less waves. But there was a guy fishing down there, but he's on a blank anyway. He said he doesn't really expect to catch anything, which is, well, neither do I actually. So I've got no bait. All I've got is mackerel, a bit of cuttlefish, which has been in out of the freezer a few times, a surf to contend with, and I'm normally always fishing for saving the blank. And I really am, I really am. So I've got my rods out. I've got a good piece of mackerel on one. I've got some lobworms out there. I mean, really, it's tough. It's tough, tough, tough. Here comes another big wave. You guys not, might not be able to see it. I can see a foreman just there. Now, it's a falling tide, so I've got low water. I've got to have a strong ebb in a minute. It's almost a going home job. But if I can fish for an hour and see the worst of the ebb tide going out, I'll be okay. I've got grip legs on all of them, they seem to be holding at the moment. But who knows? I think about, I recall last time I fished this place, just before the bottom of the tide it really rips and then you can't fish. So it means I've got to basically, and I will stay till it's dusk. No idea what I'm going to care. Have you ever had that? You know, when you think, do you know what? I might just as well go home. The rivers are all flooded. I watch the river gauges. I'm oh, checking them, checking them, checking them on the Hampshire Raven and the Stour, Dorset Stour, going down, going down, then it comes up, then it goes down, then it stabilises, then it goes up again, just goes down for a couple of days, think, right, that's good. No, another low pressure comes in, dumps a load of rain, up it comes again. The last couple of years have been a nightmare on the rivers, honestly, trying to get good conditions in the winter. So I am going to just give it a go. I'll leave the baits out as long as I can. There is not one other angle on the entire stretch of a mile of this shingle bank. Are you surprised, Graham? Are you surprised? It should tell you something. Yes. Don't fish. Too late. Too late. I've done 80 miles. Driven around. It's now quarter to one. So I've got to put a few hours in. And you know what? That's fishing. I might get lucky. I might get lucky and lose no gear. That's what I'm thinking. Mind the fish hooks, mind the fish hooks, you... Go on, go on boy, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. There's fish hooks here. Mind the fish hooks, go on, go on. Off you go and play, go and play. It's the fish hooks he'll get caught in. Yeah, he's on a lead, that's nice. Christ, that's the second one already, I've only been here half an hour. 
Well, they managed to put it on a lead, put it on a lead. I don't understand it. Well, it's the owners that have problems. Put it on a lead. It's not the dog's fault. Christ, what a day I look like having. The man up there, no word of a lie, there's an old guy sitting up there. He's gone all that way just to get away from people. He doesn't bother fishing part. And he said there's too many dog walkers, dog mess, getting dogs trying to eat all your tackle. So he doesn't fish there. What a shame that somebody else should actually ruin that bloke, old boy's fishing life. If I catch a fish today, I think it'd be nothing short of a miracle. I think I'd almost settle for a bite, even if I miss it. It's dangerous to swim and they're throwing a stick out for their dog. So who's going to rescue the dog when he gets swept away? Invariably, it's the dog that survives and it's the owners or the person trying to, uh -oh, trying to save the dog who gets drowned. Another biggie coming there, people, look. I just hope I don't get the swells that are down here. Further up the coast there, way up there. There's some big waves going to come in here. When I left this morning, blazing blue sky, high pressure, they said, for one day, then tomorrow, more wind and rain. As soon as I set my gear up... <laughs> ominous grey, rain-bearing clouds. So what I've got is a bit of mackerel, a bit of squid. I've got some lobworms in there, see them just there. I've had flatfish whiting dabs on them so they will catch but they're not the greatest obviously it's just something to use so I'm down to my rubbish bait I'm gonna have a cook up later on if I stay here this long but don't get washed away this beach fishing game in the UK honestly it's really tough it's fickle it's the wind it's the tide it's conditions it's the weed hardly any fish left by the commercial you know netters trappers and all that business what's left for us to catch the answer is not a great deal. You might be able to hear that roaring sound and that's the waves being sucked back on an ebb tide. So if you're on a high tide and you hear that roaring sound, you've got to know the tide's going out. Of course you can watch on your apps or your tide tables the same thing. You see, on shingle beaches it makes a, a loud roar. I'll try and give it to two o'clock, maybe an hour before the. Oh, Well, people, all my ranting, having a go about that dog owner, and what do I get? <laughs> Wait for this, a dog, fish, <laughs> got a dog fish. A nice one too, really fat one. My God, just look round the rubble's nearly out the rest. And look at the tiny hook I got it on. Like a freshwater hook, the other bait stripped. Do you know, I can't even remember what I put on there, it wasn't the earthworms. I think it was a sand eel, I think I had a really, really manky old sand eel. Another benefit, big benefit, he's off the hook. Just when you think it's all over, it's not. Do you know, the humble dogfish has saved many a shore angler's day. So I'm pleased with this one, I'm going to get him back. Obviously, I'm going to watch the rods a bit more. Well, the annoying thing is, I can't remember what bait I had on there. I had sandal. I think, I think it might have been a sandal, to be honest. Cause they do like sandals. Now, what do I put on now? Hmm, I've got a nice fillet of mackerel there. I wonder if I cut that in half. I think I will. Found myself a nice cutting board on the beach here, people. I'm sure the dogs will find it. Well, there you go. A dogfish saved the day. 
And of course I've lost my bait thread. Wow, what a surprise. Maybe that dog ran off with it because it will, it will smell, won't it? Let's face it, it will smell. Get this hooked up. I'm going to switch this off, it's got a low battery. I'm going to watch those other rods now. Well, no bites. Not surprised, it's totally awesome tip time. Hopefully it's getting near the bottom of the tide and it's stopped pulling a little bit. Listen, when you're fishing on your own and filming on your own, I'm filming and fishing all the time on my own. In all sorts of places, obviously out of my boat I have a radio, obviously I have my phone. But sometimes, like now, because it's slow fishing, I've been texting Wayne who's down the coast flounder fishing in Sussex, he's an entire county away. So we're back and forth chit-chatting, all of a sudden I'm going, oh, ah, I'm nearly out of battery now, better switch off. Well, at my age, especially on the beach when it's rough, it's calmed down now, anything can happen. I haven't got anything to break down, I fall down or whatever, I've cut myself on the knife, who knows. So, when you're running out of battery, why not get one of these? It's just some little charger pack and a lead. You can charge them up, on, well, I've put them on, on my computer at home. And I'll keep it in the car at all times for such eventualities as this. And as you can see, it'll just charge up like that. That will charge that about three times over full so i'm going to leave that charging like that not only could it possibly seriously save your life you could seriously tell me what else wayne is catching down there and do i need to drive 90 miles down to sussex at the moment the answer is very definitely no well now See, talking about those batteries. Don't forget also the battery life. I know because I'm filming with cameras. Your battery life is way less in cold weather and it's getting cold now. So that's gonna, that's gonna be a factor to take into consideration with your batteries as well. <clears throat> the other reason that I've got this in here, look, it's high pressure. It's probably extremely unlikely to rain, but I'm standing out there. I've been out there like three hours and I'm starting to get cold. So you've got to retain that core body temperature. So I've put the old shelter up here purely just to keep that wind off, which I know is going to come up a bit more. And it just keeps my body up a bit warmer. The downside of it is I forgot my lucky deck chair. What a complete numpty. Don't sit on the stones, guys. It's going to be really cold and suck your body temperature out. Oh! Could be waves, could be waves. If you get a sharp bite, that's the one you want to be looking for. Quite funny, I've just been assaulted by the other people over there with their dog and I've got these hooks, he's trying to eat these hooks. I don't understand it, it's the same man that came earlier. So I've now, I'm, too, well, I'm speechless. Anyway, enough of the public. I've got a grip lead here, but it appears now to be pulling way hard to the right. So uh, this is what concerned me when it gets down this tide. I'm gonna throw out up here. It's really cranked over the tide now. I might be stuffed, it might be a one-shot deal. I've got here, look, mackerel strips. That's all I've got. I'm going to heave them out and then I'll rotate the rods along, but I've got to throw this one out down here. It's just my luck to catch a dogfish from the sea and a dog from the land, wouldn't it? It'd be just my luck. I'm just going to see if I can reach the Isle of Wight there. See if I can hit the needles. I'll have to see if I can get a booty. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. You can see the swell, not a big wave, but a big push of water. An even bigger one there. Yeah. Run for it! See, my rods are buckled over now. It's not fish, it's tied. And that was my concern. I seem to remember there's a big surge halfway down here. Right, I'm happy enough with a dogfish at the moment.
Well, boys, it's not happening. The tide's now coming in, but the problem is the wind's come back up southwesterly really fast, really fast. And it's pounding in those huge waves again that I had at the other place up at Barton where I couldn't fish anyway. And it's pushing it, it's not up high water by any stretch, it's only just started coming in, but I'm gonna have to have a quick cook up because I can't see me stand. And the other guy, I don't know, I haven't seen his headlight come on much. So it's just gonna be one of those sessions. I'm so grateful I caught a dogfish. Did I just say that? <laughs> That's all I've caught. No, it could have easily been a blank. So, I could have a quick cook up in case one of these waves comes over the top here. Who knows, it's, it's weird weather. It is some weird weather. I don't think I've known it changed so quickly like this. Very, very surprised. So, I'll get rigged up here. I'll switch the camera off, get sorted out. And I'll show you what I'm gonna have. Americano. Gotta watch I don't cook the microphone here, people. <laughs> and what I've got, these waves are really big. I'm gonna have to get my uh, backside in gear to beat all these waves. I'm just gonna come up here in a minute. Look at these puppies. Jumbo, jumbo hot dogs. How about that? And they're gonna get very hot because I've got the gas too high. Now you can eat these raw. You can eat them raw. Let's turn that down a bit. The problem with cooking outside, especially like in the winter, is it gets cold. The air is cold. You've only got to move that pan off a bit and it's, uh, it gets cold. So I'm trying to cook them on one side, if that makes sense, on one edge of the pan. I, I, I don't think I've seen the weather. Or I'm going to call this a weather. Look, the breeze has picked up. It's not a gale out there by any stretch of the imagination. But I don't think I've ever seen such big waves come in so quickly. Like there's a storm coming. Like mini tsunamis. They're just The tide turned and I was just laying there dozing a bit. And then next thing I know, boom, they're coming in big time. Just had a couple of members of the Autumn Army come up. They're just fishing till about 11. Good luck, guys. Now, they say they come up because they recognise the show, blah, 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 they saw me filming. I don't think so, I don't think so. I think they smelt these hot dogs. I really think they smelt the hot dogs, one of which sounds like it's going to explode. I've, I've turned those off now on the grill because uh, I think I'm done. I'm listening to these waves out there. You guys can't see them, but some big old waves pounding in there. Right, let's get these in some rolls with some mustard. I've got in here, wifey gave me, look at this, look at this. Hot dog rolls. Ah, oh, bit of a problem, people. They're not those pre-split ones, and I'm not splitting these with my bait knife. Even I've got limit. There's my... Oh, Jesus. That's a, that's a crunchy one. I've got my hot dog and I said it's Americano because I'm going to put some of this on it. I find you need to shake this out because it has like a water that goes to the top. And if you want the best of the mustard, I bet the camera's flying around now. <laughs> People being sick. And don't put it on the top, put it on the bottom. I forgot to bring the ketchup, people. I don't know if you guys can see this. Oh man. Mm. That is that is worth coming on the beach for. Mmm. Now those waves seem to calm down again. I don't understand it people. I really can't. I wish I did, I don't. That is most strange. This one is most enjoyable. I wish I could say cheers, but I can't get a pint of doom down there. Mm. Here come the big waves again. It wouldn't surprise me if my uh, line's buried. Oh, let me get back up in here. Where it's a little bit 
a little bit warmer, not much. Uh, I've wound one rod in. Fought my way through the next hot dog. Uh, two of those, now I'm really stuffed. There's just, honestly, pounding waves, twanging on the line. I think I'm going to call it. So listen guys, sorry I didn't catch any fish other than that one doggy. We'll see you again. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Not all trips are great trips, we know that. I certainly know that. But I'm still out there trying. Don't forget Mike's TA Outdoors, hit that one as well. And we'll see you in the next programme where hopefully the star of the show won't just be a dogfish or even hot dogs. It'll be something a bit better. Time to wind in, boys. I know when I'm beaten. Well, folks, this species, I've just wound another fish in as I'm packing up. Small hook. This, this will surprise you. It's a rockling. I thought it was a weaver at first, so kids, don't just grab the first thing that comes into the light. I'm going to put this down a second. Bring that light down there so you can see the fish. This was a rockling, okay, but can you guys see what it was caught on? Let, let me put my head, head torch off. Can you see what that was caught on? Answers on a postcard. Is there going to be a prize for it? That's right, earthworms. Now I've caught whiting, dabs and flounders on earthworms. I couldn't buy any other worms. These normally for me are assigned to pack up. If they're finding the bait it means nothing else is out there. But I've no idea which this is. It's probably a one bearded rockling or two bearded or four bearded or nine bearded. I don't care but don't just grab a fish because it could be like a weaver. Don't just grab them. It could be a weaver kids. It's a, it's a <laughs> oh my god he's, he's certainly lively. So there you go. Finished off dogfish and a tiny rockling but the rockling was caught on the earthworm. I'm stoked about that. Well, it actually turned into quite an enjoyable session, and I think that was really due to the fact that I had those hot dogs for company. Anyway, sometimes I get these weird cravings, not just for hot dogs, but to do things like twitching a dead bait through the water for pike. I used to do a whole winters of pike fishing. I used to catch hundreds and hundreds of pike in one winter. Well, I used to do a lot of it. It was that and cod fishing off the beach in the winter, my two main species. So I did do a lot of twitching. And of course, now the fishing is not what it was 50 years ago, let's face it, fresh water or sea. But I do enjoy it. I managed to get out. And do you know what did I catch? Just watch this clip. I'm gonna finish this last chapter, it's good. Well, I'm here, guys. Fishing away, trying to catch a pike. I've actually already seen one swim straight past. I've seen some roach. I wish I put my polarizing glasses on. And I'm twitching just a small dead bait there with no shot. Trying to get it to sink very, very slowly. You can see it just down there twi twitching and flashing. I'll, lo I'll lower it here so you can see it. Just got it on a VB hook. There it goes down by another dead bait. We dropped off and I'm just tweaking it and twitching it. I could do with some weight on it but unfortunately if I put weight on it it's going to take it in the weed. I'm pretty sure I've already had a bump on this but I'm going to do the same procedure I've done before. When I get further up I should be able to... Oh there's a pike there now. Oh my god! Ah! Oh, I fucking missed it. I'm looking at a pike down here and I had a take out there. Oh my God. And look guys, you won't see them, but down there there's some small roach. Let's get another bait out. Oh dear, what am I, oh no me. That was just shocking, Graham. Absolutely shocking. The trouble is so much weed here, guys. Let's get it out there quickly. That one's obviously gone. Oh, I did see another, I did see another pike around the side there. Hopefully, that one didn't feel me take the bait, I uh, didn't feel it take the bait. The one I saw was a good sized fish. Oh, weed, great. Just what we don't need, son of a gun. I'm gonna try 
there's a tiny gap down there you can see I'm going to try and flick it through there if I can oh man that deserves a medal certainly deserves a fish that's for sure check drag check drag check drag is that a pickup is that a pickup feels like it to me a small fish fish on guys fish on small pike only a small pike but my goodness a hard-earned fish twitching and twitching yeah small one now getting us through the weed might be a bit of fun come on come on come on come on come on yes oh yes not a big fish guys we know it's not a big fish well people that's what's left of the well he's actually filleted that look he's done a brilliant job the old bb hook look it's not a big fish i know it's not a big fish it's got a mark on the back i reckon there's another pike's had a go at it in there there's if you look at this carefully hold still he's had Look, a scar there and a scar there. See the curve on it? I hope you guys can see this. Just there, just there. A big pike like this has had hold of this one. Not today, because it's healed over. But look at beautiful colours on this one. Lovely markings. That's as nice a marked pike as I've seen. A beautiful olive green. Great condition. And nice markings on the tail. Look at that. That is a classic, nice, sort of dark olive green pike. Crackerjack fish, and of course it saved the blank. <laughs> I love it. Well, I'm down here on the lake, guys. I chose this lake. It used to be a trout fishery about 30, 40 years ago. It's now a coarse fishery of sorts. Don't think there's any trout in there at all, but it used to be gin clear. So that's why I chose it. I thought I'll have a go, try and see if I can't catch a pike. But you'd think it was summer because it is absolutely choked with weed. Now that's not the water temperature that's caused that. That is actually the clarity of the water itself and the sunlight going through it creating the most unbelievable amount of weed and I've actually when I turned up the guy said who sold me the data he said I doubt you'll even see anybody else fishing one well, I'm not surprised are you <laughs> look at it you just can't fish but there were three guys down there with a rubber boat trying to pull holes in the weed uh, just and that's what they've done holes in the weed so I'm down to fishing a hole or two in the weed by the looks of things so I can tell they've had problems here before or have ongoing problems because look here down here is a massive massive clump of really dry that's not today's that's probably done i don't know a week or so ago so they've got big problems down here with all this choking weed and you can see here this white stuff that's also weed i think it's unfishable plus you've got this nasty black stuff coming that's right luckily i've got a really handheld umbrella this one it's all i bought I only bought a handheld umbrella just in case I get caught out because I thought it would be mobile moving around. I remember it's not a big lake, a few acres, but I think I'm stuffed. Am I on the blank? I don't know. I'll tell you what I've got anyway. I've got my pike bait and I've got a real few manky dead, of those frozen roots you get in a packet, some sprats, a couple of dead old perch. Not much to be honest, but worth a throw. And because the water's clear, I thought the pike would be able to see it, but it's fine and it's a clear water, it's going to be a nightmare, right? Let's get casting before the rain comes and see if we can't find at least one little pocket. This is like pocket fishing for pike, to be honest. Fishing in the pockets of the weed. And the problem is, I don't think it's going to get any better. I'm going to think the weed's going to keep popping up off the surface, up, up from here, up to the surface. All these clear holes, give it a few hours, and they're going, to be, uh, they're going to be choked again. And of course, I'm in the slack area, but over there, the ripple, I've already walked up there, the weed's still there, you think it's not, ha ha, yes it is, it's drifting down where these guys have torn all holes up here, it's all drifting down that way, so I guess that way, it's choked as well. I can only walk around and try and find something anyway. Fingers crossed, I might bump into something. Not weed though. Okay, so I'm no, I've had one pike, I'm having a bad day. 
This has got to be some sort of a sick joke. Somebody just walked past and had a chat with me and said that otters have virtually decimated this place, right? I don't know, just what the man who lives here tells me. It also, I've heard, otters are supposed to be territorial. Okay, but here, the genetic link is the, straight, is the same. So it's like a big family. So if, instead of fighting, there's two families of otters here living together, working the area out. So there you go, there's your otters. And of course, what they're doing there, as you can see, depicted in wood, so it must be true, eating all the fish. Now, I have to say, it's a lovely made seat, except for the fact it shows otters killing fish, yet they've charged me for a day ticket to fish somewhere that is obviously, I guess, ottered out of belief. Bit of a sick joke, that one, guys, for all you anglers out there. There's the lake. And somebody decides to put the otters showing you, yes, they eat all the fish. They chase the little fishes. Aren't they, aren't they lovely creatures? OK, now if you do want your line to float, let's say you've got a float out there and you want it to drag around in the wind, what you can do, peel a load of line off your reel like this. Just put it on the ground. Just a little tip for you. Get yourself some regular polish. Spray it onto a duster like this. There. And then... Just rub this across your fishing line. Let it sort of dry. You can do it in sections. Just give it a few seconds to dry like that and then come back the other way like this and it will polish and you'll have a line that will then float. The wind will catch it and it will drag the float around and you'll cover more ground. Obviously, don't leave a can of polish on the floor. Put it back in your tackle box. All there remains to do then is just set your float. I've got mine stopped quite shallow here because it's very weedy. I'm going to run through a little pocket, a little channel there. I can cast out and this bit of breeze will hopefully, out we go. Push against the belly of the line. It's going to, all this is now polished, so it's going to float. I can see it floating on the surface. It's going to push that float down. It might put me in an area where there's a pike. Obviously, put it down. Bait runner on. Honestly, guys, let's get that camera. I put the rod down, the float's gone. I've had such a shocker today. They're going to have to hit this one early. If we lose it, we lose it. Check that drag. Oh no, no, no. Wait, no landing net. Get myself untangled here. Float, float, don't see the float, don't feel anything. Okay, so I have to fall in the water, Graham. We have had a shocker today. Fish on, fish on. Oh, M, G, it could come off. It's kicking and shaking. It's never good when they kick and shake. Never good when they kick and shake. Not big fish, I can see it. There he is. He's out there. Try and get you a bit of an angle on this. Must have just taken as the bait drifted right through that channel of weed. Oh, he spat the bait out. Well, there you go. Who cares? <laughs> I care. <laughs> At least you see it. That technique, as you can see, works. That hadn't, I don't suppose that had drifted. Put that straight. I don't suppose that's drifted 10 feet. Brilliant. That's made me feel a lot better, even though I lost it. Look, I can just get them in your net, them in your net, and go. Thank goodness I had the camera with me. Because sometimes what you do is you strike the fish, and you go, get the camera. And then it comes off, and then nobody believes you. But you can see it's a fish about eight pounds, I guess, there. Well, well, well. Just when you think it's all over. I think I'm going to get that second one twitching. Oh, yes, please. Probably won't get another one for another five days now. Here's another tip, it's only very small, but if you've got your bait in a cooler like this, if you've got it in a cool box, and you probably put it the night before, it might still be cold. So when you get, let's say, a bait out, and it's partially frozen, make sure that you do this. Get your hook. In this case, I've got, here you can see, I've got like a VB one, and I put the larger hook through 
the bottom and right out the centre of the top. That's fine, but this might have ice in it. So what you do is you just get it and you just bend it. You just do this S motion with it. I hope you can see this. That softens up any rigor mortis. And then when you do twitch it with a float or just without a float, it's, it's nice and limp. It's got a lot more movement. You can, you can bend that right round. There we go. That's a nice soft bait now. Let's get it out there. I've had those two fish, but look, that's what the baits are coming back like. If I don't get it in those clear pockets, they just come back like this, which is obviously for pike a total, total waste of time. I should keep literally flogging away for a bit longer. Even twitching just below the surface, I seem to be picking up this awful weed. Because now there's a ripple out here, I can't see too many of the pockets. I know when I do get weed because the float over here starts to drag through the tops of the, uh, the weed bed that's growing. But the pike are just not having it at all today. I fully expect one to come rocketing out of my feet there. Absolutely perfect, good clarity. It's about the only clear hole I've got down there. But no, look, look, that there is enough to stop a pike taking a bait. Really, really annoying. The trouble is, I've made this mistake before in the winter. You phone up a tackle shop and say, is the river flooded? Is it coloured? I don't want to come two hours and 90 miles. Oh, it's fine, it's fine, and you get there. Look, I know they're selling tickets, obviously people, tackle shops tell tickets, but, but if you can, if you can get somebody local to look at conditions for you, it's much better. Just take the advice of somebody who's actually down there and can perhaps walk and see the river and, or, or the, indeed the lake and tell you what the conditions are. Because that's why there's nobody fishing here, it's absolutely choked with weed. Guys, <laughs> people have just had a pick up I can't tell you, underneath there. I lowered the rod down to wind the float rod in and cast it out again. And I just saw these bubbles and you can see them over there. I thought, what's that? And then I saw this shape moving off. So I don't know, it's gonna be a pike, I feel. Can we go and back one just in case? He's gone to the left. Fish on boys, fish on. Come on, it's not a big fish, I can see it when it... Oh, oh, perhaps, oh, oh my God, perhaps it is, oh God. It's a fish, I don't care, it's a fish, is it going to ping off? Is it going to go around my other line? Am I going to get three on at once? Oh, it feels a bit bigger. No, he looks like he's going to spit the bait. It's got that same uh, coloration to it that that very first one I had. Lovely colours and it's really scrapping well. Let's hope it stays on. Oh man, is he going well? Good fish. Good scrapper. Oh, I haven't... I haven't seen him pretty well since he boiled down. Oh, he's still going. Holy cow, what the hell? Yeah, I think it's about three pounds. I thought, what's going on here? Oh, it's, when they fight like this, sometimes even if it's like a three pounder, it might just ping off. That is bizarre, that fight. It's back winding like crazy. Let's have a look at it. Oh no, he had three pounds, that's for sure. I'm not gonna mess around this time. Oh, nice fish. Nice fish, nice fish, nice fish, nice fish. He's got me other line. Oh, what? no wonder I was backwinding people. <laughs> oh, he's got me other line. Hang on a second, let me get sorted out. He's in the net, that's the main thing. Right, I am organised now. Wow. He's not a million miles away from the magic figure. <laughs> that is absolutely a butte pike. Let's get it on the mat. That's a double, I'd say. Deferini, a double. Nice fish. My God, I thought it was about three pounds. Weird marking. 
Let's get him unhooked first. He's done exactly the same as the others, guys. He's just coughed that bait up in the net. There he is. Look at the gold colour on that fish. Do you know, I don't think I've caught him in that colour. It's got to be the fact that it's a sort of ex-trout water. Now, he's not gonna, he's not gonna go doubles, he's gonna go. So there you go, it's about, I would guess, just shy of 10 pounds, that one. But you can see the lovely markers and colours on it, and that's gotta be all the weed in the water, the colour of it. <laughs> what, what a result. Last minute, right under my feet. Let's get it back. Oh, 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 this water is so clear, but I've got a special case in. I can't actually put this one underwater. Hopefully you'll see it when I release him. There he goes. Look at that for camouflage. Beautiful. What a result. Makes up for that other one pinging off. Look, if I don't film when I'm playing a fish, I can get it straight in the net, it's not a problem. But when you mess around trying to order with a camera, I've lost so many fish. It's all your fault, all you YouTubers. Trying to switch a camera on, trying to change the volume, trying to clip this thing on, trying to do this, trying to do that. Ping, they come off. But listen, that made up for it. That's all about, right on the edge of that weed, pocket piking. I mean, I just lowered the bait down here. Started winding this, I saw a bit of a commotion, a bit of a flash. I thought, what's that down there? When I look, I could just see the line creeping. Brilliant. I just had one follow me in, it's going to get clipped up. I just saw the shape of it turn down. I lower the, the, uh, the bait, it's sunk to the bottom, and I've seen his tail go down like, I do, like this. I don't know if he's taking it or not. The line's not moving, no flashing. I'm just going to leave it. I've got the bail arm open. I can almost, almost see the bait. Years ago, Years ago, I used to climb up trees and stuff like that and look down and I know pike will lay looking at a bait for a long, long time. I mean, I've, ha I've had them watch baits 20 minutes and I've had my friend come up, twitch the bait, as soon as you twitch it, bam, they grab it. So, whether this one's still down there, I do not know. He certainly hasn't taken it yet. It's about five pounds, six pounds. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is just leave that one down there with the bail open. I'm not sure I can see him down there. Bring this one back in and see if this one, because I've hooked this one through the back. Just show you this one. It's howling wind now. What a change in a day. Now this one, on my float, which I'm drifting around those pockets, I just hooked through the back. Because for twitching, I hook them through the nose. You can't twitch like this, it's static, but it's hanging the right way up. So I'm wondering if I let this just drift through on the wind, he can't be a million miles away, will he take it? Down on the bait runner. I've got that line with uh, polish on it, so it might just belly round, who knows. The trouble is, it's weird, the wind's going that way and there's a current going up here, I don't understand that, unless there's an outflow up there, I don't know. It's just out under there, my bait is on the bottom. If I had an underwater camera, I could show you the bait laying on the bottom. There's so much weed there, probably partially sunk into the weed and he doesn't like it. You never know, he might pick up that one over there, which is hanging down the right way. Guys, I've seen him flash. I've just twitched the bait, as I said. I, I'm 90% sure he's good at it. I've just seen a, a flash. So I've got to try and... I'm pretty sure he's got it. He's not taking any line. He's just laying there. And I'm, I'm not, I've done a lot of piking. I'm pretty sure he's got that. I'm just going to ease this one out so I don't spook him. This one can actually be deepened while I'm just there. He's not moved off with that at all. He must have been laying looking at it like I told, I told you. Let's just throw that one up there out of the way. Close the bait, bait runner on, right. Yeah, lines move left. I think you guys should be able to see something if I do get a hook up. And we do indeed have a hookup. How long it'll last, I do not know. I have no idea the size of the fish. Man, I should have been fishing with my polar oyster. Oh, yeah, nice fish again. <laughs> do you know what? This clear water, they look three pounds and they're not. He's going to go away. And of course the net. Somehow, I think he's going to go off again in a minute. There he goes. There he goes. 
Oh, go for the wheat. Go for the wheat. Don't go in the wheat. We don't lose any more pike. Wow. <laughs> I can't believe how things have turned around. He's going to jump my way if he jumps. Oh, nice fish. Nice fish. Guys, it's amazing how small they look in this clear water. Let me just get this one on the net for you. On the uh, mat for you. It's in the net, Graham. Don't get too excited, mate. There's a difference between a net and a mat. One's green, one's got holes in it. Out you come, my bonnie chappy. Same sort of colours. There he is. A bit smaller than the last one. Got leeches on him. Just here. Let's check out where the hook is. Hopefully, just in the scissors. The bait, there guys, is the bait coming out of his jaws. Bit mashed up, I could leave it to him, but you never know, I might need it later on. Take a quick look at him. So camouflage. And there he goes, just release him. My God, he's almost going down by those stakes. Well, I think I've got to pick up there, guys. See the spool going? Just taking the line. On the twitch brat this time. There it goes. Let's get loaded. Locked and loaded. Helmet cam on. Look at that setting. Guys, I know there's a lot of weed in there, but I suppose I'd better not write this lake off, had I? I think I'd better get on back wine. Graham, get on back wine. It's buried in the weed. Not another one, please. Kick it. I've got to get up. I've got to get up. Get, get this fish. Get some juice on this fish. There he goes. Get some juice on him. Just risk, just risk losing it. Bury in the weed. That's what the last one went in the snag. He's got me in the kid. You son of a freaking. I don't know why I moved him. Come on. I'm going to back walk. I'm going to walk back. It's the way I've done it before. Like beach fishing, like tiger shark fishing, just walk backwards. He's in the weed again, you son of a... Jesus, wet. Good fish too. Bloody weed and it's freaking water. Look, he's buried. He's absolutely fucking lovely. Fucking bastard, well buried. Am I on back wind? Yeah. I'm going to risk breaking this one off, guys. Got no choice, got no choice. Got to kick out, got to kick out. I'm going to keep walking backwards. Anybody sees me fighting a fish, I'll be up the road and on the A35. I think I've got him out. If there's a load of weed on there, I ain't bothered. I really am not bothered if it comes in with a clump of weed on it. Oh God, it is a clump of weed, looks like no fish. Shh, son of a bitch. No, no, it's a fish there. Fish is at the back of the weed. Just sneak him in, let's sneak him in. Oh, oh look at the weed on that. There's the fish, but look, I nearly lost that. I'm on 15 pound line, and that's why I'm using 15 pound line. Uh, the bait doesn't go in. Rummage around, what have we got in there? All organised. There we go. Man alive. That weed. Got to, if, you, if you're fishing the weed, guys, do not use weak line. It's just a one-way ticket. Yeah, he's, it's only a single hook. This one isn't even a isn't even a VB hook. It's just a straight single. There's the hook. Hooks out. Fish is has fish has something else in him as well. Well, that's not a bad old session, is it? Get this fish back. Yeah, be quick. He might jump. Oh, maybe five pounds. A few of these, yeah, a few of these. He's going to, oh, he's going to go. He's gone. Just a few of those. They're called pike. And now I know what you're thinking, guys. 
a single lady coming up saying, can I see it? Yes, I know, can I see it? I don't even want to go there. What is a goer? Is another cast. Wind's backed off a little bit. Lovely, lovely light ripple on the water now. Of course, I cannot see those pockets where the weed are, but I'm just shallowing up all the time. And I think those pike are coming on the feed. Probably coming in for the roach in those very same pockets of weed. But you can see how I very, very nearly lost that fish. If I hadn't been on 15 pound line and back walked it, I think that would have been buried in a bit of lost fish. Don't enjoy that. I like to have a nice clean fight, but what a well, great afternoon session, I have to say. Bait, 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 bait. Well, it was still good to catch those pike, I have to say. Maybe I was a little bit lucky there, but I do like pocket fishing for pike. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We'll dig another film up for you to watch, possibly next week. Might even put two up next week. See how the fancy takes me. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button on both channels, TA Fishing and TA Outdoors. Little tinkly bell thing gives you a notification of when they come up. Support us, we'll do our best to support you. And when this weather stops blowing, I hope to get the boat out. Meanwhile, the only thing I can do is read about it. And I've got 600 books. That is rather a lot of reading. We'll see you next time.